again? There he is! Whoa! Now it's time to get to the bottom of this mystery. Come on, gang, let's see who the mastermind really is. Wait, Fred, like I think I know who this guy really is. It's that spooky groundskeeper, right? Oh yeah, that's right, blame the spooky groundskeeper. It's always the spooky groundskeeper. <laughs> what do you people have against groundskeepers? <laughs> Some detectives. Why don't you just say the butler did it? But no, it's always got to be the groundskeeper, don't it? Anytime some ghost scares somebody off a well-kept lawn, it's just got to be the groundskeeper. Like we couldn't just put up a sign that says, keep off the grass. Nah, I'll just get myself a big old rubber monster suit. Um, <clears throat> as I was saying, Let's see who the mastermind really is. It's, it's Professor, Professor Alexander, Alexander Graham. Graham! Oh, me? <laughs> oh, my. Uncle Alexander? I don't believe it. I knew it all the time. <laughs> Something just doesn't add up. If you ask me, someone's playing a nasty trick. A trick of the light. <gasps> Wow! That was just another hologram. Holly, what are you doing there? Zoinks! But Holly's right! <laughs> <laughs> Wrong, Shaggy. That Holly was just another hologram. The real Holly has been the mastermind the entire time. Think about the clues. Remember how Holly said she followed all of our cases? Only she'd know enough about our old foes to program holograms of them. And I noticed how she passed through that rail near the secret lab. By setting up a hologram of herself when the mastermind was around, she'd have the perfect alibi. But what I don't get is how she got the professor here. In a mastermind costume, no less. Well, that's simple. She used my patent pending, dressed for supper, suck you up her. I spent so much time in the lab that I built a device that could get me dressed and to the front door in seconds. <laughs> that way I can uh, be on time to pay the pizza delivery man. <laughs> exactly. Ruby. Holly must have used it to get here ahead of us and switch places with her uncle. Who she'd already stuffed up there. It was very uncomfortable, let me tell you. Like, and don't forget the most important clue of all, Hologram. Get it? Hologram? <laughs> Hi, kill me. But why, Holly? Why go through all of this? You guys would have caught my uncle, and when he was sent to jail, I'd steal his super hologram invention and claim I came up with it myself. I would have made a fortune, too. Well, it, it was a good plan. Yeah, and I would have gotten away with it, too, if not for you meddling kids and your pesky dog. Huh? Here, Professor, let me help you. Oh, thank you, kids. I don't know how to repay you. Well, all these fiddles are a great start. Hey! Scooby Dooby Doo! <laughs> <laughs> After them, I say, stay, stay away from me. <laughs> Good work, Scooby-Doo. <laughs> Way to go, guys. But why is the ghost still here? Shouldn't your magic book have gobbled him up? Beats me, Daphne. I think it's busted. I don't think so, Shaggy. I think this ghost didn't get sucked into the book because he's not really a ghost at all. Is that so? In that case, let's see who the ghost really is. Walter Peabody? Peabody, I'm quite disappointed. Well, I figured it out when Shaggy showed us that receipt from the bookbinders. Peabody, being responsible for book restorations, didn't want anyone to find out that he had a fake Tome of Doom made while he kept the real one for himself. 
And I would have gotten away with it, too, if it hadn't been for you meddling kids and your pesky dog. But why would he do such a thing? And why did he rip pages out of the real Tome of Doom? That, I don't know. Yet. Well, perhaps I could hire Mystery Inc. to find out about those missing pages. That would be great, Mr. Dinsdale. But we have another assignment to take care of first. At the Milton Brothers Movie Studio. Meanwhile, I could look the Tome of Doom over and try and find out why Peabody tried to steal it. Very well. As long as you don't bring it back late. <laughs> Aha! Like, finally! Will we do? Now! Let's see who's under that helmet, er, box. Robert Zabrinsky. I should have known that cat was up to no good. Walter Peabody must have sent him pages from the Tome of Doom to scare away your cast and crew. Knowing that this would force you to sell. And I would have gotten away with it too if it hadn't been for you meddling kids and your pesky dog. How did you figure it out? Well, Shaggy and Scooby's clues steered us in the right direction, but the real clincher was the helmet. Its oversized shape was perfect for the image-conscious Zabrinsky, who could wear it without messing up his impeccable hair. But what about my bro? I'm over here! <laughs> Zabrinsky ambushed me and wrapped me in these... You scoundrel! Have you any idea how much these mummy costumes cost? That was some great detective work. Even better than in The Big Nap or Death on the Rhine. Say, have any of you ever thought of being in pictures? You know, you'd make a great damsel in distress. Well, now that you mention it, what about me? Uh, well, we always need writers. And what about us? Like, can we do the catering? <laughs> Actually, I had something better in mind. We did it, Scoob! Yeah, good job, guys. Way to... Uh, go. Oh, you saved me. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Let's see who's under that wig. Mindy, Mindy Styles. Styles? Oh, Mindy, how could you? I became suspicious when Shaggy told me about the costumes hidden in the school. Going back there, I found papers from Greenwood Development. Now, who could be using these costumes? Why, who else than the last remaining employee? You mean she's the one who lured us with all that delicious food? <laughs> Please, don't take it personally. I had no choice. And to think she would have gotten away with it if it hadn't been for you young city slickers. All right, like you know what that means, Scoob, old pal. Yeah, free lunch. <laughs> sure you... Oh, shucks. Mindy's got the key to the food locker. What? No, wait, stop! Like, stop the car! Hey, come back! We need the key! The... Raggy, look! Daphne, Fred, Velma! Boy, are we glad to see you guys. Guys? I'm afraid they can't hear you. Huh? Really? They're under our control now. Like, what are you saying? My greatest invention. Behold, a mind-altering alpha wave modulator. Oh, it's a mind control device. Oh! <laughs> Antenna have been placed throughout the country. Soon we will use them to make everyone buy our products. We'll destroy the competition. Selena, how about a demonstration for our new friends? Delighted to. Like it's all right. <laughs> really, like we already had some alpha waves on the way over. Hey, right, Scoob? Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. 
<laughs> Selena, what's going on? I don't understand. Their simple minds must be immune somehow. It doesn't matter. Meddling kids, rid us of these fools. Rodro! Come on, Scoob. We've got to find a way to turn off that machine. This cannot be! No! Where are we? Like you guys were mind-controlled by that Sherman guy. So, the giant antennas were for amplifying alpha wave modulations. Or in layman's terms, mind control. Ingenious. Enough! Seize them! No. You'll rue the day you messed with... What did you say? I said no. Just who do you think you are? Mr. Mr. Dinsdale? Dinsdale? That special agent Dinsdale, if you don't mind. Jinkies! All this time I thought you were just my local librarian. What, I can't have a second job? <laughs> Travis Sherman, you are under arrest for fraud, conspiracy, and book tampering. I don't understand. Like, is the book overdue? <laughs> it's quite simple, you guys. Agent Dinsdale was investigating the peculiar land acquisitions at Greenwood Development, but he couldn't get a good lead. So he let us have a go at it and kept tabs on us the whole time. Sharp as ever, Miss Dinkley. I'm sorry I had to lead you on like this, but Sherman was just too big to touch without solid evidence. And I would have gotten away with it, too, if it hadn't been... Sherman! Been... You fool! You should have let me deal with those kids when I had the chance! <gasps> Don't let her get away! Let's see how you meddling kids handle this! <laughs> Any sign of Selena Drake? There she is, up on the roof. <laughs> Let it go, Selena. It's over. My dear Travis, did you really believe I got you into this in order to sell VCRs? There's only one goal worthy of my genius. With the Alpha Wave Modulator, I shall rule the world! <laughs> She's completely mad! Well, duh. <laughs> Prepare to face the Tome of Doom's most powerful spirit. Oh, King of Fire, share my vengeance! Kids! Shaggy, Scooby, I want to thank you both for your help. We couldn't have done it without you. Like it wasn't easy, you know. We've been attacked by ghosts, shadows, mummies. Zombies? Aww. Would some Scooby Snacks make it all better? Scooby, Scooby Snacks! <laughs> How did you... I did my homework. Hey! What gives? Using the Tome of Doom to snatch away snacks. Now that's one for the books. Dooby dooby doo! Scooby dooby doo! Now let's see who Zen Tuo really is. It's Maggie Z. It was her disappearing act that gave her away. 
quite a trick, until I realized she was conveniently near a sewer entrance. Using the dragon as a distraction, she could drop down into the sewer and be gone. <laughs> Nice try, Mystery Ink. Like she's not real, she's mother. You can't catch what you can't hold. That sounded like a man's voice. I know what you're all thinking. That voice. I know Jed, and, and that wasn't him. Alvin Wiener? You can't prove anything. Besides, I'm the victim here. What do you mean? Daphne, what we have before us is a story of jealousy. Mr. Wiener's band, Deaf Potato, was never a real success. He blamed his failure on the guitar ghoul, whom he saw as a rival. Wait, so like, you blamed yourself? Not quite. He was offered a way to destroy the guitar ghoul, literally from the inside. All he needed was this costume. Scooby? Mummer! Of course! Who gave you that costume, Mr. Wiener? They didn't offer their name. Just a chance for revenge. By sabotaging the Guitar Ghoul's popular theme park. And I would have gotten away with it, too, if it hadn't been for you meddling kids. So, who's the real ghoul? And why is he hiding? Not he. She! Yeah, Velma's right. I am the real guitar ghoul. But why the secret identity? I wanted to share my music, not my life. So I created the guitar ghoul disguise. Perhaps this uh, could remain our little secret, huh? Like our lips are sealed. Thanks, I appreciate it. In exchange, I've got some information which you might find interesting. <laughs> It's time for you to evolve. The security guard? You kids can't prove anything. Well, I think I can. Upon closer inspection of the bone Scooby found in the tar pits, that black fluid on that bone wasn't tar, was it, Mr. Grimm? Oil? Right, Fred. Those aren't tar pits out front. It's a petroleum reserve. And those bobbing animatronic dinosaurs are covering pumping machines. And I would have gotten away with it, too, if it hadn't been for you meddling kids. It's got to be worth a fortune. Oh, it is. We could make a deal. We don't make deals with criminals, Mr. Grimm. Besides, wouldn't you have to check with your partner first? The one supplying you with mother? Monstrous fright and magic. Two for two, Fred. Scooby found a contract that points right back to Stanton. And if I'm correct, the answer to Jed's disappearance. Stanton sent us on a wild goose chase. Going somewhere. The jig is up, Mr. Stanton. Is it? Like, there are two of you. Hmm. Scooby? It's Marcy! Indeed, Fred. It seems Marcy was trying to frame Stanton, not Jed. Marcy? But why? Because I helped create Mubber, but you took all the credit for it. I thought that if I gave you a bad name, I could start up my own business. Mr. Stanton, is this true? Marcy, I didn't know you felt this way. You should have talked to me about it. Destroying the reputation of monstrous fright and magic would destroy Mubber. I'm sorry if I hurt you, Marcy. I'd like you to become a partner in the company. If you can forgive me, that is. Yeah, I think I can do that. Another mystery solved. Are you coming, Shaggy? Just making myself something for the road. I call it a mother witch. <laughs> huh? What give? <laughs> now that's what I call a light snack. 
<laughs> like the curtains closed on this musical. Coach oh, Hayes? What? But where's Miss Hilkin? Right here. She was just scared. Not me. Whenever I thought the Phantom was around, I ran to protect my most precious possession. A golden square. I won for the performing I used to do. I predict someday Anna will have one too. But why did the coach do it? Simple. For the love of the game. He knew he needed a full team to have a chance at winning this weekend's game. So like he sabotaged the show. Exactly. Then the coach hooked himself up to the wiring in the theater, making it look like he could fly. And I would have gotten away with it if it weren't for you meddling kids. Well, it sounds like his next play will be a gripping courtroom drama. And the school is finally scarce of scares. scooby dooby doo Let's see if this mechanical menace has a master. Tim, Tim Toiler? Toiler? That's right. Tim, the Toy Man Toiler. Snappy nickname. It's actually quite simple, Mr. Smithers. Once the new amusement park opened, all the kids were too busy with the new rides and arcade machines. And Mr. Toiler just plain got jealous. <gasps> Nobody wanted to play with his toys anymore. <sighs> like I know where I'd be, because you can't buy Dagwood dogs at a toy stand. So he sent out terrifying toys to scare the locals away from the amusement park. And he would have gotten away with it, too, if it weren't for you kids. Yeah, thanks. We can't take all the credit, sir. We had a little help along the way. Yeah, well, who better to help catch an evil toy maker than his former apprentice? Now that things are safe, I'll be making some new toys. Great! We'll be back here to check them out! <laughs> Yikes! Phew! Right now, we'll be checking those out! scooby dooby doo Man, like all this lobster business is making me hungry! Willie the Whaler and Seth Angler Finally, all the puzzle pieces fit. And I know just the person to handle these two. So, Captain, we're handing them over to you. I'll be happy to see that justice is served. We haven't used the brig in years, except to pickle hair. They almost had us fooled, until I saw Seth pick up those diver flippers. All those shiny pearls. He was just about to move them, ready for the next load to come in. They teamed up to recover Willie's sunken boat. That's how they found Pearl Reef. Then they scared everyone away, and the pearls were theirs. And we would have gotten away with it if it weren't for that little mermaid and her gang. Mermaid? <sighs> yeah, I won't forget this, Bluebeard. Ah, hush, you fool. You kids are welcome in Rocky Bay whenever you please. Scooby. Dooby. Doo. Like that witch didn't have a sense of humor, but she sure did bring down the house. <laughs> <laughs> you did it, kids! I may not have a castle, but a curse I can certainly do without. I can't thank you enough. We're just happy to help you, Baron Hood. It was a tricky mystery to figure out. Yeah. Who would have thought the castle had a secret gold mine underneath it? And your sister would want you gone so she could have the gold all for herself. Yeah, how did your sister do that stuff with the lightning and the magic and the getting bigger? I beg your pardon, but what sister? I don't have a sister. Yes, you do. Lady Zarni. She lives in the castle with you. Nobody lives in Keystone Castle but me and the servants. And I am an only child. But we saw Costington talk to her. Actually, Freddy, all you saw was Lady Azarni talk to Costington. I guess that's a mystery that will have to remain unsolved. Fine with me. Me too. <coughs> Excuse me, sirs and madams. The food festival, <coughs> pig out party, is served. Be doobie <coughs> food. <laughs> 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 
time to see who's really causing trouble around here. The Sheriff! We have been looking for this man. We? Just what is going on here? Forgive me. I am from the Bureau of Undercover Tactics and Ludicrous Espionage Response. Otherwise known as... Butler. I am a spy. A spy? Oh dear. Yes, because of your love of oil, you were our prime suspect. No outsiders getting their hands on my oil. But after helping Costington move in, I knew he had no time to construct the giant puppet you defeated. So the sheriff wanted the oil? You bet he did. He dressed up the old Day of the Dead mascot in an attempt to scare Costington away. You mean El Scariachi? <laughs> Looks like he scared more than he bargained for. Like the whole town left. See, Costington turned out to be tougher than the sheriff thought. He didn't leave. So he had no choice but to keep the show rolling. Well, then he threw us in jail and tried to blame us. And I would have gotten away with it too, if it weren't for you meddling kids. Well, it seems like the curtains closed on this case. <laughs> yum, yum. Scooby dooby doo! You hear that? Yep, sounds like we're about to solve this mystery. Jeepers, the mischievous snowboarders. Let's not forget about the mastermind of this operation. Oh, come on, guys. It was just a prank. A very dangerous prank. You and your friends have hurt a lot of people, Moose, including me. <laughs> I don't know how you do it, Mr. Ink. You guys are 50% better than 100% amazing. Now it all makes sense. You stole the lift tickets to stop people from heading to the summit. Oh, <laughs> dude, you should have used the snow machines to make snow cones instead of the blizzard. And if I know costume making, and I do, this giant yeti was made from all the missing animal parts from the chalet. Yeah, and my precious equipment. Why? Why would you do this? This mountain was ours, man. Until they brought all those tourists along. You wanted to scare everyone off the mountain, so you could have the place to yourself. I could have boarded in peace if it weren't for you meddling dudes and dudettes. Well, I'm sure you'll find a sense of peace when you help fix the damage you've done. Breaker, breaker, Lila. We got the ice cap mushrooms. Over. <laughs> I think you boys can explain that on the way home. <laughs> It's addressed to you, Daphne. So get your mitts on and bring the gang to love Anna. That's creepy. There's a whole bunch of them. Jeez. Our phone number is written on this pinup board. There are photos of us, too. But why is she so interested in us? I thought it was strange when Costington said he didn't have a phone. It looks like Lila made the phone call, pretending to be Costington. Looks like she wrote those, too. <laughs> Wait, please. One second. Nothing is as it seems. I know I look like a crazy witch, but the truth is, I just needed help. Like, why didn't you just ask? I thought you wouldn't believe me. My family moved away long ago, but I had to stay with Suji. She needs food from the swamp, but I've been trying for so long to make something I can take with me, so Suji can come too. And so you had us get what you needed? Yes. Thanks to you and Scooby, Suji and I can finally rejoin with my family. Thank you, all of you. And please, forgive Suji. She's just very protective of you. Oh, man. Come on! I knew it! Hmm. Oh, so, like, does that mean we don't get any food? <laughs> I wouldn't exactly say that. <laughs> <laughs> 